of Cuban revolutionary leader Fidel Castro. He died this morning at the age of 90. And now SAPC presidential correspondent Mzwandi Lembecha spoke to President Jacob Zuma about the passing away of Fidel Castro. We were very shocked this morning when we woke up to the breaking news that uh, <clears throat> former President Castro is no more. Very surprised because we hadn't had any indication that he was not well. He has been doing very well over the period. So we're shocked. Um, indeed, uh, our thoughts were taken far back, uh, if you think about Castro, uh, because of his, importance, of his importance in terms of the struggle for the liberation, uh, <clears throat> his way, he conducted firstly his own revolution, how he immediately uh, swung the system and became a socialist country right in the, in the almost intestines of <clears throat> uh, the Western world, as it were at the time. The world was still divided into two. And, and, and Castro conducted a revolution that produced a number of uh, <clears throat> leading revolutionaries like Che Guevara, uh, and I remember in the in the in the in the early 60s, uh, we even sang songs that take the country the Castro way, because he had a lot of impact in the manner in which he led the revolution in Cuba, particularly a small country in Latin America that was highly dominated by very autocratic uh, <clears throat> leaders in different countries. So to us, uh, once we heard that <clears throat> President Castro is no more, uh, really we, we, we looked back and said, well, how is the world going to look like without Fidel? Uh, but of course, he, <clears throat> he had matured in terms of uh, his age, he was old, uh, he had also, because of the good medical system in Cuba, I think they had taken very good care of him. Of course, if you talk about Fidel Castro, as I say, uh, we saw it in those days as the revolution happening in, in, in Latin America, but also saw that revolution having an impact uh, to our own struggles that we were fighting in the continent of Africa. And indeed, as soon as Cuba was free, um, it opened its doors uh, to the freedom fighters. Not just uh, freedom fighters only to help. I think it is a well-known fact that uh, uh, <clears throat> his colleague and comrade, um, Che Guevara, <clears throat> traveled Latin America and Africa uh, promoting uh, a new way of assisting uh, the, those who are struggling and coming himself to participate and help in many ways. We developed a very strong relationship between us uh, as, as, as the ANC and the Cuban uh, Party, Communist Party, for many, many years thereafter. Uh, Cuba uh, as a country and Castro as a leader, very charismatic, but also full of ideas uh, in every respect, uh, a, a soldier, uh, so to speak, <clears throat> very brave, uh, made a contribution not only of establishing a revolutionary country in Latin America, but also once he was ready, within no time, he was able to empower the Cubans, firstly, <clears throat> to empower them ideologically. But the ideological thing that I'm talking about, I'm really looking at the patriotism. The Cubans have such a deep sense of patriotism on one, on one side, but on the other, a big sense of internationalism. I think they are the one country that demonstrated internationalism more than any other country, uh, given its size, given the problems that it was, it was, it was faced with. Uh, even when it was uh, the, the neighbor of the United States, a powerful country, 
tiny as it was, it was able to, st to, to stand its ground for decades and decades and decades. Uh, one is happy that uh, when uh, uh, Fidel Castro's <clears throat> life came to an end, at least one of the major <clears throat> uh, breakthrough had been made between the relations between Cuba and the United States of America. Uh, this is what uh, he spent a lot of time uh, dealing with. But he did not say because he was in trouble in terms of that, uh, etc. Once he was estab established as a country, he was ready to help by training freedom fighters. He trained a lot of our, our own uh, um, guerrillas um, in terms of military training, in terms of entrenching patriotism and internationalism, but also trained our, our cadres in, in ordinary education, uh, produced a lot of engineers who studied there, some of them are here, and uh, a lot of also uh, lessons to, demo, to, 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 to diplomacy. Uh, Cubans had a lot of diplomacy. Small as they are, they were all over the country. And what became important was that some of our, our people stayed and, and actually spent many years in Cuba. They almost became like Cubans. And the, those who spend more years, the deeper their understanding of patriotism, how it works together with internationalism. That was an important one that uh, we, we, we learned. And Cuba defended uh, the case of the poor in the world. And he was ready to speak his mind and he was ready to expose the imperialistic kind of tactics and strategies that they use because he had to deal with the United States, so to speak, almost on a daily basis. In Africa, he did not just end up by sending doctors only to help Africa to develop. Of the leaders outside of the continent in Latin America or across the Atlantic, he demonstrated this in many ways. Doctors uh, which are still here, uh, the doctors in South Africa, we have a huge number of the doctors who are working in our hospitals and clinics uh, some of them who have been here for many years. Uh, but we are also training our own doctors, a huge number that we, we, we send to Cuba who are in Cuba as a result of our relationship. So our relationship did not just start and end during the struggle, but it went on when the two countries were free. When we became free, we established our relations very strongly. But... What also Cuba is, is, is always remind, remembered, uh, and, and, and Castro in particular, is that when the apartheid regime was causing problems in Southern Africa, particularly uh, trying to stop uh, <clears throat> the, the advance of the uh, Swapo guerrillas in, in, in Namibia coming from uh, Angola, uh, and also trying to stop Angola from assisting us, uh, and they were actually, as you know, they actually invaded the south of Angola. It was Cuba, it was Castro, who was able to take a decision to send Cuban soldiers to come and help uh, the Angolans, to help all of us uh, to stop South Africa from uh, advancing and taking over countries in southern Africa. And that became one of a major landmark in the history of our struggle in southern Africa. Uh, I'm sure you'll remember the famous Quito Cunaval that uh, saw the mighty uh, South African apartheid force being, uh, being stopped there in a serious manner. And, and the Cubans' involvement in that side of, 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 of our region really led to the, 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 the South Africans <clears throat> reaching a point where they had to negotiate for the liberation of Namibia. It was because of what role the Cubans, together with FAPLA forces of MPLA, that they had done. The, what was thought to be the big mighty was shown that it could be dealt with in a particular way. And that period was absolutely important because 
That's when we began to have a very clear feeling that we could, in no time or in a matter of time, march into South Africa, the combination of these forces, perhaps march to Pretoria. Uh, but we all know that, that those developments in South Angola, in, in Namibia, immediately shortened the days of the liberation of South Africa. And, and therefore, to us, Castro was not just a friend, was our leader, was our mentor, was our revolutionary, an internationalist, uh, an educator uh, to us being far away. But in Cuba, he had specific programs on the TV and radio where he was teaching the Cubans uh, all what is good, the values and everything. So to us, we have lost a, a friend, we have lost a leader, we have lost a real friend who, who made us uh, to be what we are in many ways, uh, Fidel Castro. And therefore we feel uh, <clears throat> a, a deep sense of sadness and, and, and we therefore would want to convey our deepest condolences uh, to <clears throat> President Castro's family, uh, to his comrades and the leadership, and the people of Cuba, and the party, the, South, the, the, the Communist Party of Cuba, to say condolences. We have lost a hero. We have lost an international revolutionary. Given this uh, huge impact uh, Castro and Cuba had on you as uh, liberation fighters then, uh, how would you want to see him really remembered or honored, perhaps by South Africa? Well, we'll have to <clears throat> really to be part of uh, those who must honor uh, Fidel Castro. And I'm sure we will sit down and give it a thought, because it's not a thing you can just say on your feet. We've got to sit down and say, how do we remember this international revolutionary, this leader, uh, this commander <clears throat> of a very powerful uh, force, small in size, but powerful in its uh, capacity? How do we remember him as South Africans, particularly given the contribution he made to our revolution? I think we'll have to sit down and say, what can we do to honor uh, this, <clears throat> this huge and huge uh, leader of, of the revolutions who is known by all those who fought uh, to liberate their countries? We will have to sit down and say, what can we do? Something that will befit his status and his contribution. As president, you visited uh, Cuba, I think in 2011, if I'm, 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 I'm correct. And then, then it was uh, Raul Castro who was mm. the president. Um, were you able to meet uh, uh, Fidel Castro? And then what were your impressions of the man? <clears throat> well, yes, I met uh, Castro. Of course, I was not meeting him for the first time. I'd met him a number of times. Uh, you remember one time he came to attend a conference here in South Africa. I'd also met him even before that, even when we were still in exile. Uh, but when I went there as, as, as uh, paying a state visit, it was another kind of experience because here I was going, representing and, 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 and representing South Africa. Um, <clears throat> and of course, I met uh, the president, uh, the other Castro, who is also an amazing man. Uh, <clears throat> then I had an opportunity to meet uh, President Fidel Castro. I found him. Uh, as, 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 as energetic as he was, uh, as, as, as analytic, we, he spent time analyzing the, the balance of forces globally uh, and what was happening and, and what he thought we needed to do uh, in, um, in the developing countries. He spent a lot of time discussing Latin America. At that time, as you know, Chavez was still alive and he was very, he was very much... Uh, uh, <clears throat> occupied about Chavez's role that he was going to play and how much he was trying to, to make the countries in the, in the Latin American, particularly the small islands, that they should work together, uh, they should develop 
etc. His mind was always uh, somewhere and talked about the achievement that made on the medical, medical side. Uh, but his analysis of, of, of the globe, the balance of forces, was amazing to a man that who thought he was just sitting and not, and, and, and he was reading, uh, and, 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 and reading books and quoting books, and then and, and, and knowing what is happening on a current basis. So it was absolutely um, pleasing to see him. And, and, and we, we actually spent more time than the time allocated, because as it were, he's a man who had ideas to put across all the time. So it was absolutely wonderful. There was a special day which very little other programs were there. It was actually put uh, for him so that we should spend enough time with him. What lessons can we uh, learn from uh, the, the role people like uh, Castro played in order, for example, to confront our latter-day challenges? Well, what we learn uh, from Castro, firstly, is, is a leader who is very committed to what he needs to do. And, 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 and who does not just get committed and stop there, who plan about how to achieve what you want to achieve. And, 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 and whatever happens, no matter, at some point, as you know, Cuba is not a very rich country, uh, but Cubans, he had led to Cubans to know how to live within their means, uh, how, to, how to, to, to love their country, how to, to, be, to, to be satisfied with what they had, uh, but how they must always on the alert to defend the revolution. Uh, how much he was with very <clears throat> uh, limited resources, he was, he was ready to share that to assist others in other places, including, including some of his soldiers dying across the Atlantic Ocean in Africa, fighting to liberate and to defend uh, their, 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 their fellow brothers. Uh, of course, also because of the nature of Cuba, uh, you know its history, um, the Cubans are everything. You find the, the darkest Cubans, you find the lightest Cubans, and, and, and the, the multinational, multiracial nature that nobody thinks about the color there. Uh, that's what uh, 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 Castro succeeded to do. Uh, because he focused on the thing he did. He wanted to produce the best doctors in the world, and he did. He succeeded to do so. But carrying these doctors and soldiers and Cubans in whatever field, carrying this deep patriotism and deep internationalism, the combination of those two was something else that we would want to emulate him. And, and, and I, I wish and hope that South Africans could because South Africans, given our relations, given the nature and the history of South Africa, we could do so. Uh, but also Cubans, one of the things they had is a, is, is a very serious discipline, what you could call a national discipline as Cubans. There is nothing that in Cuba will find somebody doing something wrong. So because they were united, they were clear, they, were, they, they wanted to defend their freedoms, he led a country that did not have difficulties, but was there to defend, to, 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 to make a Cuban proud. Whether you went to sport, the Cubans will excel. Everything they did, they would excel. And this was because their leader was excelling in whatever he did. And therefore, he became respected by everyone, including those who could have been on the opposite side of him, but they respected him. Meanwhile, former President uh, Tabumbegi says Fidel Castro was committed.